The new contract for Atlas Machine and Tool is coming up in three weeks. I suggest we get together on terms as soon as possible. Why, Frank, what are you doing here? You should have stayed away the rest of the week. And sit in the house alone? Uh -uh. Maybe you've got a good idea there. You know, keep yourself occupied here among your friends. Hello, Mary. Good morning, Frank. Uh, we were just going over the weekly report. Would you like to look in? Oh, no, thank you. But I would like to have a few minutes with you alone. Mary doesn't mind. Certainly not. No, Henrietta's father was my best friend, also my partner. I remember when she was born. Hmm. They say those favored by the gods die young. I didn't exactly come here to talk about that, sir. Oh, no, of course, my boy. Excuse me. I brought this matter up at a board meeting a couple of weeks ago. It's about these so-called accidents. I thought we decided that issue, Frank. I'm sorry, sir, but I still think someone is trying to wreck this company. You don't seem to realize it, that what happened to Henrietta was meant for me. Oh, now, you've been under pressure. You... I want to get whoever got my wife. I can't imagine anyone doing a thing like that. All right, all right, then. Perhaps it was some madman. I don't know. But you can't deny the fact that we are losing money. Oh, but the insurance covers our losses. Oh, the loss of those trucks doesn't worry me half as much as the loss of our reputation for dependability and promptness. But we agreed that nothing could be done. Yes, yes, the board agreed by vote. But I didn't happen to vote that way. I thought then, and I still think that we ought to investigate. Investigate? Who? Our competitors? Yes, yes, if they seem guilty. Oh, I know all of our competitors. They're decent people. An insurance man has been snooping around here for the past week. And believe me, if they take over, you've really got a problem on your hands. That's why I propose that we get to the bottom of this thing ourselves. Now, uh, how are you going to do this? I've already got a man in mind, a chap I met in the Army. He's quiet, steady, and dependable. He's an investigator, but... This sort of thing is his specialty. You'll get along all right, my boy. You know, you've got what it takes. Of course, it's kind of hard for an old man like me to admit it, but <laughs> you're usually right. Thank you, sir. How about a cup of coffee, Frank? Don't mind if I do, sir. Pops? Terrible. That's bad. I didn't say bad, I said terrible. What's the matter? I'm expecting heartburn. Well, stop expecting heartburn. If I didn't expect heartburn, I'd expect something worse, and that'd be awful. Just fearful coffee. What are you drinking it for? Well, the girls pour it, and I can't waste it. You own the place. Why don't you fire them? <laughs> I own it all right, but they run it. Uh, don't let it get you down, Pop. Check the rig, will you? Might need some oil. Sure. Hiya, Joe. You come up Highway 13, Hank? Yep. Tough, the boss losing his wife. Yeah, it sure was. Oh, looking for someone, Hank? How'd you guess? Where is she? <laughs> she had your engine before it topped the grade and ran to powder her face. You know her women, Hank. No, how are they? <laughs> Same as per usual. That's right. Okay. Whose is this? Right here, miss. As if you didn't know. Why, Hank Wilson, have you been sitting there all this time? Let's stop playing so hard to get, shall we, honey? And put some ala mode on this. How you can eat ala mode for breakfast every morning is beyond me. Honey, when you push your rig all night like I do, everything is upside down backwards, including your stomach. What's the matter, that night hole too much for you to handle? What do you mean, too much for me to handle? You're complaining about your stomach. Well, I'm not complaining. My stomach's fine. If it wasn't, how could I eat pile of moat for breakfast? There you are. You're admitting it's bad for you. I didn't say that. Honest, fellas, did I say anything like that?
Okay, okay. I'll take the oatmeal. Full of oats. And we're not even married yet. There you are. Eat it all up like a good boy. Thank you, Mama. Could I have a spoon? Everything's okay, Hank. Hank, Bob. Good for coffee cars. And pie. No pie. Yes, pie. No pie. I see you made the trip up and back in one piece. Kings don't seem to bother you none. Not me, Pops. I'm so lucky you'd think I had good sense. Now, don't go pushing Lady Luck around too hard, honey. I never heard yet of anybody being vaccinated against death. What's all this gab about dying? I feel bad enough already. You ought to. It's your tenth cup of coffee. See what I mean? Always at me. I was reading the other day where somebody said accidents don't always just happen. People that have accidents want them. I wonder what that lady who got killed last night would say to that. Say, wasn't she your boss's wife? Mm-hmm. That outfit of yours doesn't live right. Maybe you ought to work for somebody else. And let that jinx know I'm afraid of it? Not me, honey. Let's change the subject matter. Accidents give me the willies. You said it, Pops. Would uh, Madam care to see me to my limousine? I'm busy. Would you like for me to kiss you right in front of all these eggs? Why not? Ashamed. All right, Irresistible. I'd like a word with you in private anyway. See what I mean, fellas? A firm, strong hand right from the beginning. Yeah. You'll find out about the weaker sex. They're all muscle. <laughs> What's the matter with your uncle lately, honey? Seems like he's always in the dumps. I don't know. Aunt Mert's worried, too. She thinks maybe he's sick or something and won't say. Hank, I'm worried about us. No, no, you got nothing to worry about. In a couple of months, I'll have enough for a down payment. Honey, just the other day, I saw the sweetest 20-ton rig over in Bakersfield you ever saw. It's a fire engine red, and the guy said I could... I know, Hank. You told me last time through. By the way, did you ask for the raise? Well, no. Oh, it's like this, honey, with a company having all those accidents and those guys getting hurt and quitting. Sounds to me like you've got them just where you want them. Now's the time to ask. But, baby... I'm not kidding. If you don't ask for that raise, I'll... I'll... Hey, you really are sore, aren't you? In that case, I guess I'd better ask for that raise, huh? That's my boy. Bye. I see you soon. a lot of crust asking for a raise at a time like this. If I don't get it now, I never will. I'm curious. What makes you think you deserve more? Well, hasn't a man a right to want to go somewhere else and down? Oh, I suppose you want to be president. Why not? They're always talking about Mr. Norris being a self-made man and how he rose from behind a truck wheel to be president. Yes, that's true, but uh, Mr. Denton went to Princeton. Miss Hadley. I don't care if Mr. Denton went to Princeton, Harvard, Yale, or all three. All I want to do is get a little dough ahead. I'm glad Mr. Denton went to Princeton. And it's all right with me if he rose from number four on the polo team to a soft job in the trucking industry. Thanks. But it wasn't so easy. And it isn't so soft. And my game was hockey, not polo. Well, I didn't see you standing there. Would it have made any difference? It might. I could have talked to you direct. Had I come up from the ranks, I probably would know your name, but unfortunately... Wilson. Hank Wilson. If you'll just use the phone, I can pick up my check and my walking papers on the way out. Just a minute. Aren't you the man that found my wife? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Denton. I guess everybody thinks nobody else has any troubles but his own. Oh, don't apologize. Is there anything I can do? Yes, there is. Here, sit down. Did you notice anything unusual about that accident? No. I just wanted to find out. Frankly, it looked like just another accident to me. But I get what you're driving at. I'm beginning to think that this isn't just one of those ordinary run-of-the-mill jinxes. For one thing, its batting average is too high. And for another, it consistently favors the same territory. Do any of the other men have the same idea? Well, I'm no mind reader. Do they talk about it? Yes, but nothing definite. Well, we better not talk about jinxes anymore. The morale is bad enough as it is. All I'm asking of you is to be 
Extra careful. Give him a $15 raise. Well, that's all I wanted to see you about. Thank you, miss. Hadley's the name, Mary Hadley. So long, Miss Hadley. So long. George, I'll have... Oh, it's all right, Mary. Come in. George Montgomery, this is Miss Hadley, our personnel executive. How do you How do? do you do? This is the chap I was talking to Mr. Norris about. He's going to see if he can ferret out this jinx. Well, I wish you luck. Well, thanks. He feels the best way for him to operate would be to act as one of our drivers. Sounds good. I want George here to go through channels as though he's applying for a legitimate job. That's easy. And as usual, we'll put him with an experienced driver first. What about Hank Wilson? Good. He's got ideas, but, and he's alert, but for your purpose, he's the best man you could find. Well, I guess that's it. From now on, Miss Hadley will take care of you, and anything you need, just ask for it. I'll be seeing you around, Frank. Okay. Oh, uh, don't forget, we don't know each other. Right. You said you'd never drove a truck before. Well, I did some driving in the Army. The Army? Where? Burma Road. Burma Road, huh? I heard about that. Must have been pretty rough. Yeah, they, uh, they never did get around to paving that road. You in the Army, too? Sure. Who wasn't? Driving trucks? What else? Where? Europe, Third Army. Not the uh, Red Ball Express, by any chance. Yeah, that's right. Blood there. Well, that must have been something. Oh, I don't know. The roads were paved. Go on, you know what I mean. <laughs> no wonder you're not afraid of a little thing like a jinx. You could push trucks through that mess. You could push them anywhere. The Clover Cafe is just around the curb. Let's pull in and have a cup of joe, huh? Good deal. Excited. You want everybody to know you're in love with me? Don't worry. Nobody'd ever think I'm that dumb. Doris, this is George Montgomery. George, this is Doris, my number one gal. The others all have false eyelashes. <laughs> Pleased, I'm sure. George will be dropping in from now on. I want you to take good care of him. But not too good, understand? I've got all details. What was that crack? Did you get the raise? Raise? What raise? Oh, you mean the raise. You should have seen me. I was terrific. Did you get the raise? Sure, I got the raise. Honest? Honest engine and cross my heart. You can set the date any time you want to. I'll let you know next time, too. Well, now that we've got that all settled, how about something to eat? George, what do you have? Whatever you say, Doris. Bear is an intelligent man. Hmm? From now on, you're a dead pigeon. As soon as you bring him his oatmeal, darling, you might bring me a nice large piece of Aunt Mert's delicious apple pie a la mode. That sounds good. On second thought, I'll have the same as him. Anything else? Coffee. And while we're eating, will you fill this up? We've got a long haul ahead of us. Two bowls of vegetable soup. OK, dear. You bet. Pops, I want you to meet George Montgomery. George, this is Pops Lacey, Doris's uncle. Hiya, Pops. Hi, George. George will be working his own rig in a week or two, so give him a break. Why, sure. You check the rig, everything okay? She's okay. So you have an accident. Cheerful. Yeah, Pops, just a nice, bright, happy playboy. <laughs> Turn that coffee. 
I might as well be drinking plain mud. Hey, uh, tell me, Hank, what's this jinx I've been hearing about? I don't know. You know as much about it as I do. Some of the boys seem to think it's sabotage. Could be. A couple of more weeks and those oranges will all be in bloom. I've uh, narrowed it down to a place in Fairview, 25 miles out of town, Clover Cafe. I know the place, a man named Lacey. Runs the garage, too. And what else do you know? The company has him on a retainer to check our outgoing trucks. He belonged to a Midwest gang in the 20s. You know that? No. What can you prove by a man's past? Well, I, I can't prove anything, but it's a good lead. Anything else? Uh -huh. I hit on a pretty good motive. It takes us right back inside the company. I don't like to cast aspersions on nobody. But since you asked me, it's no more than my duty to tell you. And you can't remember his name, huh? Seems to me his name was George. Doris, what's the name of that driver Hank brought in a couple of weeks ago? I don't remember. Hmm. Well, you want to know him. He's one of your drivers. Oh, yes. I, I think I know whom you mean. Why are you suspicious of him? Well, sir, I never met a fellow who could ask a darn many questions. I even caught him snooping around my garage. We'll check on it. I didn't expect you'd give us much help, Mr. Lacey. We're just doing a little snooping around ourselves where the accidents occurred. No, no, Mr. Dutton. I couldn't think of a dress on the house. All right. Thanks, old timer. We'd better hurry along, Miss Adley. Good night. Good night. What's the idea of making a heel out of a perfectly nice guy like George? I got the people like the guy, haven't I? Seeing as how he pays me to check his trucks, I got to act like I want to help. He's okay, Pops. Right.
Back again, Miss Hadley? How'd you get? Oh, it's you. What do you want? Here's a manifest on that load of sodium. Hmm. How'd you get all that stuff on one load? Better use these, Mac. You'll get in trouble. I've got 20-20 vision. Then use it. Get out of here. Like it, honey? Yeah. What about that fire engine red job over in Bakersfield? Oh, a couple of more weeks won't hurt. Well, anyway, Hank, I'm glad you'd rather wait for the truck than for me. Bye, honey. gets on my nerves around here is all the time wasted with this lollygagging. What you get you? Hot button. Yeah, I can get that from your coffee. Oh, what you need is a nice piece of pie. Rest your arm, Mark. tell you it's the truth. Ask Mac, he can tell you. I couldn't have been gone from that warehouse more than five minutes. And what's more, I know I set the brake and left it in gear. I always do. It's a habit with me. Now, son, take it easy. Take it easy? You're accusing me of criminal negligence and telling me to take it easy. How else could you explain it, Wilson? The poor devil was obviously checking a load when your truck rolled back and crushed him. Oh, no, it's not as simple as that. My truck would never have rolled back if the brake hadn't been released. You're not suggesting murder, are you? I'm not suggesting anything. Well, I'm suggesting we discharge this man and consider the matter closed. Oh, no, you can't brush me off like that. You would hardly expect us to keep you on. If I were you, I'd get a job in another state. Oh, you would, would you? And have this thing follow me around wherever I go? Oh, no. If I'm going to be the patsy, I'm going to find out why. We're not going to postpone anything, Hank. We're going ahead just as we planned. What a way to start a marriage. Weak start, strong finish, my dad used to say. We might at least wait until I was cleared. Either the date stands as it is or the whole thing's off. You know, of course, you're marrying a criminal. Stop talking like that. Don't you see? This gives me a chance to stand by you to help you fight. You wouldn't want to cheat me out of that, would you? You know, honey, the more I know about you, the more terrific you get.
We better get back. No, I don't want to face those guys in there. Oh, Hank, you're not going to go dodging around in alleys. Come on. I'll fix you some pie a la mode. Pie a la mode? Uh, by the way, uh, do you happen to know anyone around here by the name of Hank Wilson? My name's Hank Wilson. They'd like to have a little talk with you in town. Why? What gives? Suspicion of homicide. Better come along. You bet I will. The sooner this gets straightened out, the better. Hank! Don't worry, honey. Let's go, Wilson. Probably had it coming to him. You can forget all about that permanent wave, I promise you. Doris. Hey. The papers say he was a private detective. They say he was murdered. Yeah, it's a big deal, isn't it? Why don't you tell him you're good friends? Why don't you tell him you weren't even there when it happened? Because you can't do it that way, darling. You have to clear the proper channels. You send some guy in to talk big to you and get you all confused. And first thing you know, he's got you believing you did do it. Hank, stop that. I'm sorry, darling, but it was my truck, and I was the last man to see him alive. Until they find out who did it, I, well, I guess I'm it. It could have been an accident. It was no accident. Somebody released my handbrake. Here's a man who wants to talk to you, Wilson. Alone, if you don't mind. Goodbye, darling. Drop by and see me on your way out. Sure. My name's Kelleher. I'm an attorney for the insurance company carrying most of that Norris load. Oh? Yeah. For a moment, I thought you were someone with good news. I might have it that if you'll go for our proposition. Thank you. I'll be as brief as I can. I know you're not in any rush, but I am. So here's the pitch. You're in the clink here on suspicion of having murdered George Montgomery, a private detective. That's a lie, and you know it. No, thanks. Sure, I know it. Montgomery got in touch with us as soon as he took the case. His report puts you in the clear, so we're working on the assumption that you really are. Why don't you tell that to the man that's got the keys? Well, we'll have them hold you here for a while. Tell the newspapers it looks bad for you, and then one day soon we'll let you out. Thanks a lot. We'll even get your old job back for you. Special recommendation from old man Norris himself. What's your angle? If I can prove murder. Maybe I can prove that these accidents were criminally arranged and not the fault of the equipment or the drivers. And if I can do that, I can save my company about a half a million. Is that big enough? Okay. What happens when I get back with Norris? Well, it's this way. The Gilly party will figure that you've been reinstated for the reasons you have been reinstated. So they'll be wanting to know what we know. So they'll be coming around to you sooner or later to ask questions. I get it. I knew you would. But I don't like it. Did uh, Montgomery's report give you any leads? Yes, but it'll work better if you don't know them. We have definite proof against a party outside of the company. What we'd like to do is get the motive behind all of this destruction. Okay, I'll do it. Anything's better than stewing in this jail. Good. Say, that young lady who was here, that's your girlfriend? Yeah, we're gonna be married. Well, let's not tell her anything about it, huh? No use worrying her any more than we have to. Okay.
Everything's just as it was before. Nobody's acting any different. You sure? Think now, any little thing. I don't care how far-fetched. The day I checked in, I kind of thought that Hadley Dame was making a play for me. Is that bad? You could hardly find a prettier lead. Wait a minute. You don't think she's mixed up in this, do you? I don't think anything. All I know is it's something to work on. Maybe she likes you. Maybe she's just curious. How do I know? It's nice work, and you can get it. Has it occurred to you that I'm going to be married? Remember, business before pleasure. Match? No, thanks. Okay, first chance I get. But right now, I've got a load of mining machinery in the back that has to be in Bishop by tomorrow morning. I'll be back tomorrow night. Okay. Good evening, Mr. Denton. Hi, Mac. Oh, Wilson. What's that? If I think hard enough, it's supposed to spin. Just by thinking about it? That's what the book says. But you've got to concentrate. Concentrate, huh? Can you do it? No. My mind's too weak. You can say that again. Well, here's the receipt for that mining machinery. See if you can make it file itself. You drivers are all alike. No imagination. Miss Hadley still here? What's it to you? Yes? Why, Mr. Wilson, what brings you here? I was just checking in and I saw your light. Oh, I see. And you were concerned about me. Is that it? Well, yes. You want to know something, Hank? I was just thinking about you. Me? If you're staying, close the door. Thank you. Now, tell me the truth, Hank. Just why did you come to see me? Oh, I don't know. Just a sudden impulse, I guess. Well, now, that's not a bad reason at all. As a matter of fact, it's rather flattering. At least you weren't sent. Sent? Why should I be sent? You're engaged, aren't you? Well, uh... How do you know these things? I always know everything possible about the men who work for us. And who interest me. She's rather cute. Oh, you've seen her. I told you. I make it a point to know everything. What goes on here? I just dropped in to say hello. And that brings us right back to where we started. Why should a man who's engaged to one girl drop in on a sudden impulse to say hello to another. Is this the reason, Hank? No wonder it won't work. Used to dope and thinking wrong purposes at me. We're going this way. See? Oh, the other way. Miss. Oh, miss. Thank you. Okay, honey, I give up. Yeah, you and me both. You really are sore, aren't you? Never mind about me. Just give me your order. I get it. You're mad because I didn't come right out here as soon as I got out of jail. Do you want me to take your order or don't you? But I phoned you and told you I was busy. Then they sent me on a run up north. Give me a hamburger and some coffee. One burger with. No use, boys. I guess I'm not in the mood today. Holy mackerel, look at that clock. 
Hi, Hank. I gotta run, boy. So long, Sam. Well, let's not act like this, honey. I'm sorry, and, and I promise it'll never happen again. Well, okay, then. Let's have it out. If there's one thing I can't stand in a woman, it's a great, mysterious silence. All right, go talk to your Miss Hadley. Maybe she'll hold your hand for you. Oh, so that's it. Has Sam been talking? He and half a dozen others from your outfit. And what'd they have to say? Oh, you ought to know. You're the one who's been going places and doing things with her. Oh, believe me, honey, I... Don't tell me she meant nothing. I saw her. She meant plenty. Listen, honey. It's no use. I know what I know. Well, if you don't trust me now, you never will. That's exactly what I mean. I tell you, it was very important for me to see her. It, it's strictly business. Do you have to think that low to get ahead? That's not it. What then? Yeah, I can't tell you now. It's top secret. Oh, Hank, after all. It's the truth. It's no use, Hank. I'm only glad I found out before it was too late. What's eating him? I broke off our engagement. Give me a cup of coffee. And give me a piece of pie. But hand it to me. You know, if you ask my opinion, you've done the right thing. I'm not asking your opinion. Ever seem funny to you that Hank never got mixed up in any of these accidents? Not particularly, but with his luck and my prayers. Why? What are you driving at? Well, it's kind of peculiar. He was the first to find that woman who was killed at Beaufort. And he was there when that private dick got his. Seems like Hank's always Johnny on the spot. Don't be ridiculous. It's yours? Yes. I mean, no, it's his. He forgot it. You know, uh, that private dick uh, seems more interested in Hank than any of the other fellows. That'll do, Pop. I don't want to hear any more about it. Maybe I shouldn't have busted up with him so quick. If anybody could find out what Hank Wilson's up to, it would be you, wouldn't it? You made her cry. I ain't done nothing. Stop picking on me all the time. I tell you, there's nothing to that Hadley angle. All it's doing is messing up my life. The way I've been hanging around, she naturally thinks I'm in love with her. Is that so bad? No, but my gal's got the same idea, and that is bad. I tell you, Miss Hadley doesn't know a thing about it. All right, forget it. I have a better angle anyway. You say your girl is Doris Lacey? I didn't say, but that's her name. Do you know that George Montgomery's report is strongly suspicious of the Clover Garage on Highway 13? You mean Pop's place? Oh, no, you're way off the track. Am I? Well, then listen to this. Am I out of the doghouse? No, but I've been thinking over what you said about trusting you. You won't be sorry, honey. Honest, you won't. I know, Hank, but married people shouldn't have secrets. Things are getting a little easier to explain now, honey. The picture's beginning to change. Look, I can't talk in front of all this mob. I'll be back at 11 tonight. Could I see you then? Mm-hmm. Bye. Bye. Hi, Pop. Hi, Hank. Nice going. Hey, miss. How about some syrup in these hotcakes? Yes. I had to see who made the first move, and it happened to be Miss Hadley. As it turned out, she was only making a pass, but I had to stick around. You can see that, can't you? Oh, knowing how thorough you are, I see that part all too well. Of course, you'll have to take my word. I got away as quickly as I could. I suppose. It's uh, funny you're telling me about being suspicious of those accidents. 
Pops was saying almost the same thing. He said that? Yes, he even thought you looked rather suspicious yourself. Hmm. Pops suspicious of me, huh? I thought we were friends. He says that you never got hurt yourself. But you were always somewhere around when the worst ones happened. Has it ever occurred to you that Pop looks pretty suspicious himself? Oh, now, really? Well, after all, what do you really know about Pop? You've only worked there for a year. Well, they used to live in the same town. I, I've known them practically all my life. What kind of work did he do back there? Well, he, he worked for somebody, I think. People usually do. Well, he, he drove a car for somebody. I used to hear him mention his boss's name when he talked to Dad. There you are. For all you know, he might have been a gangster. Oh, no, not that. It's funny, I can't remember exactly. You're lying. I'm what? I said you're lying and you know it. Don't use that tone with me. It's my turn to use any tone I want. You said we weren't going to lie to each other anymore, and first thing off, I catch you in one. You're out of your mind. Do you mean to tell me you lived all that time in the same town with your uncle and didn't know he was mixed up in two robberies involving murder? I never knew any such thing, and I don't believe it now. It's on the record. Pops was never in jail. Sure, he was smart enough to beat the rap, all right, but he was there. Yeah, he drove a car. He drove the getaway car for the West Side Gang. And what's more, he's still mixed up with him. Only he's not driving anymore. He's fixing the cars for the poor suckers who work in my outfit. Just who are you, anyway? I'm Hank Wilson, remember? You know what I mean. Who are you and what are you trying to do? Right now, I'm trying to give you a break. The sooner you talk, the easier it's going to be for you. For me? Come now. Don't tell me you don't know what's been going on in Pop's garage. I've had just about as much as I can stand for one night, Hank Wilson. Gee, you look mad. What happened? Well, he certainly didn't act like a guilty man. Just the opposite. He turned right around and accused you. Me? Yes, you. This you and me have a snack. What did you say? Stanhurst, four, six zero, oh, six zero. Oh. Lazy speaking. You alone, Mary. Hank Wilson talked to Doris tonight. I don't know about you, but you got me pinned to the wall and labeled. Me, I'm going to blow. I had my doubts about you until I heard that phone call. Who's Mary? Mary Hadley? What I can't understand is why you did it. Why did you do it, Pop? Never mind about that. It's you and me. I think it'll be a lot easier for you if you tell the cops. My truck's down the road. pretended to be in love with me so he could spy on Pops. I'm beginning to think he isn't even a truck driver, but a detective in disguise. But why should he spy on Pops? He said Pops was the cause of all those wrecks. 
He said Pops has a criminal record in Chicago. That isn't true, is it, Aunt Mert? Is it, Aunt Mert? Where's Pops now? Well, isn't he in bed? No. What's wrong? Nothing, darling. You be a good girl and, and get some sleep, eh? Are you crazy? I had to. Oh, I knew this would happen. Get him out of the truck. Don't do it, Bill. Haven't you enough on your conscience already? Get up. Get up. What are you going to do to him? Oh, wait a minute. I've got to see it through. Come on, help me get him out of the truck. What you don't know, you can't be held for. I'll go this alone. Please give me the police and hurry. Calling Sheriff Substation 22. 22. Go east and west on Highway 13. Stop Norris Express panel truck for questioning. Sure this is the road? I'm not sure of anything. The old lady said that we're headed this way on Highway 13. This fits in with your case, so I thought maybe you might like to come along. Kid must have walked right into it. Yeah, that's what we figured.
That must be the place. How are you going to do it? Drive the truck to the top of the grade. Set the throttle, pile out, and send it on down with him inside. I'll follow and pick you up in Mary's car. I'll be waiting at the top of the hill. All right. That ought to make it look real. like this and I'll have the willies for good. It didn't bother you so much when it happened to my wife. I told you we wouldn't get away with it. But we did get away with it, darling, and we are getting away with it. Two men in that truck ahead are the only ones alive who can prove anything. And in a couple of hours when the cops find their bodies, it work out just like I said. All we have to do is tell the cops our theory, that Hank Wilson wrecked the trucks because his mind was injured in the war. And he blackmailed Lacey into doing his dirty work. You think they'll believe that? Of course they will. Kelleher says so. Why are you so sure he will say so? Because that's the only way he can make sure his company will get out of making payment. That's all he wants, really. He'll leap at it. He'll even make it stand up in court. Maybe that's the trouble. You always did make it sound so easy. Lowering the stock value by the accident. Buying up the controlling stock with my dead wife's cash. And you and I, darling. That's what I've always
Looks like you'll have a nice little reward out of this. I can think of a lot easier ways of making a buck. You're not by any chance thinking of that fire engine red job over in Bakersfield. Well, not for the last couple of hours, anyway. Then you better get started. I can't think of a better way to spend a buck, can you, Mr. Keller? Uh, Match? Thanks. Lucky guy. <laughs> <laughs>